I am here at the Vintage Computer Festival, Berlin, vcfb.de, and I am at the Nixdorf location. This is the first time for me ever to do something like this, and this is an entire display of uh, the stuff that, uh, that, that Nixdorf has placed here, here in Berlin, which makes sense because they're a German company. And I just spent the last uh, 15 minutes talking with Johannes. And this is Johannes uh, Blobel, yes? yes? And what position do you have at the Nixdorf Museum in Patterson? Or Paderborn, excuse me. I am actually a PhD student at uh, Paderborn University. Uh, and our institute is directly next to the museum. Excellent. So I'm doing some projects with the museum and giving a computer history lecture. Uh, and trying to teach uh, the students about the, the history. That's computing. fantastic. Well, I'd like you to do that for us today here a little bit with uh, some of the technology that you have here, which I've only seen a different variation of. So uh, please talk to us about, uh, about what all of this is uh, in English for the first time. Yes, so what we have here is a ROM memory technique called uh, stick memory, which was invented by Hanewinkel in 1967 and then used in the Nixdorf 820 uh, computers. The idea is similar to core rope memory, where you would have a, a ROM uh, and where you would, would uh, wind your program through the through the course as it was used in Apollo. Yes. That was very tricky to manufacture. Um, and this memory uses the same physical principle of uh, inducing a current, uh, but it has a different way of, of uh, doing that. So here we have the original. This is a readout unit where the program stores were plugged in. Looks like this. Wow, that's really cool. And to, to explain how this works, this technique, we have here a small demonstrator. So we have these uh, sticks which are actually uh, coils, as you can see here in the original, right? Ah, yes. A lot of coils. Yeah, we see quite a few of them in there. You need these coils once for the readout um, and the actual program is then programmed by using wires. So the idea is if we take a wire, we can either let it go around the stick or it can pass the stick. And depending on how I put that here, I program either one, one, or here, zero, zero. And now if I send a current through this wire, this is basically all a small transformer. So at least two coils, a small voltage is induced, which signifies a one, as you can see here. And if I would rewire it, I store a different set of data. And now the, the thing is, you can't just have one wire, you can actually have many wires, as we have prepared here. So now we have five wires, which are differently wounded, and depending on which wire I select, I get different data out of it. So that was easier to manufacture than core rope memory. And the actual programming was then done on this machine. So here in the back, you have this is paper. so. Let's see. Here. Oh, it's 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 punch tape. Yes. Yes. So we can see not very well there, but there's holes. There we go. With the camera is focusing. There's holes there on the punch tape. We see the rolls or the single roll, the punch tape here, as it goes through. And it looks like there's a source spool of wire here, yes? Exactly. So what we would do then, the, what's on the on the punch tape is projected. So this is actually uh -huh. here. Look at this. Look at that. He's passing his hand through there and it's blocking the light. But as the light passes through the, the holes in the punch tape, it shows on the corresponding, uh, uh, I guess, 
loops here, right? Loops or holes. And it looks like this is fiber optics. Is that what this is? Fiber optics? No, that's just a, a small copper wire. No, I, I oh, mean what transmits the light from here to ah. here. Is that fiber optics? Oh no, just a mirror. It's just a mirror? Just a lens and a mirror. Super, Len sim super simple. Wow, okay. Um, and then you, you have your wire, uh, which would go through this too. Come out here. Uh -huh. And then to program, you start at a certain point and then you immediately see, okay, here I have to pass by, here I make a loop, pass by, pass by. Your loop again, and right, this way. Right, you can see the lights. You exactly. put the loop where the light is. So I can I can easily get the program from the punch tape onto this uh, uh, yeah memory. The memory board. board. The programmed and memory board. Exactly. Wow. So here on the on the information about how to do this, you can again see the principle right where there's a green light. I would have to make a loop, otherwise I pass it by. And here I get 265 wires into it. Wow. We have uh, one, one uh, operation, uh, is here this 18 bits, this oper operation and address. So basically I, in total I get uh, 36 kilobytes onto this uh, single device. Which was a lot for what, for what, 1967? Yeah. That yeah, uh, was a lot for 1967. End of, end of 60s, so that's basically one bit per square millimeter, which is around the density that the first EEPROMs would achieve also then years later. Wow. So, and if you have programmed that, you can just put it in here, close the lid, and then you can see how these sticks go through it. Right, and so this is this is one of those boards right now? Yeah, you could have two of them. I see. Right, so you would have double the capacity with just very few of electronics for the actual right. readout. So we're and looking at one of these, but upside down. So on the other side of this, it, it looks like that. You put it in like... Like that, okay. Yeah, yeah that's actually very helpful. And so then this was, this chassis, was a like a changeable program chassis, right? Yeah, that was included in the Nixto A20 machine, which looked like this. Aha! Uh -huh. And I've seen uh, pictures of that machine in a lot of places, but mostly I only uh, I only see uh, the German description. Mm -hmm. And I have to trust Google Translate. Yeah. And I'm going to have to say your explanation is much better than Google <laughs> yeah. Translate. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's how the, the stick memory works. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. And then, why don't you show, just so that there's no confusion, you showed a board that actually is core memory. Yes, and sir. so let's let's make a comparison how this, the concept is similar. I, I think, what did we decide on how to say it? That it's the same, it's the same concept, right? It's the same uh, technology, but it's implemented in a very different way than core memory, is that correct? The direct connection to core memory is a bit tricky because that is read-write. And here, data is stored by uh, magnetizing these cores. Ah, uh, yes, you're correct. So for this, uh, this is a RAM module. This but is, and this is and this is it's it's RAM, right? Yeah, this one is a RAM module. Random access memory, sure. But you can actually use these cores in a different way by not having this regular pattern and then sending no, currents through it but uh, having uh, the, the wires not go through all of the cores, but just through some of them, that's called core rope memory, um, which also uses this principle of inducing a current if the wire goes through the core, and not inducing a current if it passes by the core. And, and that's absolutely fantastic. So this core, this is one of the most open, most easy to see, uh, core memory boards I've ever seen, and I notice a name up here called Triumph. Is this Triumph? That was a German uh, company that was bought by Nixdorf. Ah, um, yeah, and that's really nice because you can actually see the cores here still. Yes, right. Yes, with, with more uh, complex ones, they become way too tiny, but here you can directly see how these uh, wires go through the cores, how it's all connected. 
Well, that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But that's a RAM module. Fantastic. Now, it looks like this schematic here is a lot more, I mean, it's printed in color and everything, and so it looks like it's more modern than all of this. So is this a modern reprint, or why does this look so new? It looks so new because it's scanned and printed, yeah. Okay, so, so it's which, been enhanced makes, for the... Which makes the colors look, look nicer. I see, okay. Yeah. Well, very nice. It looks like a little bit of some of the uh, some of the schematics that I've scanned for my Entrex uh, 480 and Nixdorf 620 systems. So I see the connection there. Well, thank you. Is there is there anything else you'd like to, to share about any of these particular things? Well, if you're interested in how the computer was used, yes, please used continue on with that. I, I that's a so, good thing to share. Yeah, we we've talked about the Nixdorf 820 machine. Uh huh. Right. Yes. Uh, in Germany, it's called uh, Mittlere Datentechnik. Um, oh, you got to say that again. <laughs> Mittlere Datentechnik, that is um, middle data technology. Wow, okay. Uh, which signifies that it was not a very large computer, not a very powerful computer, uh -huh. um, but much cheaper, so smaller companies could actually uh, buy one of them. Got it. And so the programs that were then in these uh, modules were for bookkeeping, for example. So, oops, those look like some very old forms there. Yes. Oh wow. We actually don't need those. That is just the bill. Okay, so that's a sample of something that would have been produced on one of these systems yeah, so, eventually. Well, that is just a printout. Uh, the uh, the machine actually used for oh, there it is. storing and working this data, these magnetic forms. Look at this! So here on the side, you have a magnetic uh, stripe uh -huh. where data could be stored, and the data that is stored here was then also printed out. Uh, so that if you take one of these sheets, you immediately see basically what is stored on this. Wow. And what it was used for, if, for example, for a bank, if you have a savings account, you would have here the stripe on the side where the data is stored. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, in, it's in the shadow, but yeah, we, can, yeah. we can see it there. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, there we go. Yes? Right, and whenever you uh, get money to the bank or uh, you, you make a new line here, which was typed in, um, and then everything like uh, calculating the interest and everything was done by the computer. That was one possibility. Or also if you have uh, credit with your bank, um, all of these things were, were stored um, on these uh, magnetic forms. Wow! The computer was also used for other things. Um, and could do some more calculating things. Uh, so you have different programs uh, which signify what is calculated here. And then this is uh, the results were printed out. That was used here for uh, measurements. Um, yeah, but the, the basic idea was to have a computer simple enough to be affordable uh, and powerful enough to actually do something meaningful with that. That is, that is excellent. So I have a question more about this form. Now, do you know, do you know uh, much about the specifics about how the magnetic information was encoded on this strip? For example, was it like a nine-track tape, where there's nine, where there's nine tracks of uh, magnetic flux transitions here, where one is a timing track and the other is eight bits, or is it some other method? I'm not sure about the how exactly that was stored, and also uh, we also got a, the question how much data could you store on that, but I currently don't have enough information about okay. that. Does this, do you have a picture of the machine that would have written the data on this, or the, you know, the, the peripheral, the component, the part of the machine? Well, that is the one that could be seen... That I'm not sure whether that is just a printer. 
in this version or also could read the, the magnetic stripe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because see, this is this is interesting. Is this this piece here? That was that for uh, paper tape or yeah, magnetic? That, that was for that, paper that tape. For paper so there's tape your paper tape one. reader. Okay. Yeah, uh, as you can see here. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Here's right, the right, diagram. Right, right. You have the the keyboard. Uh, paper tape, uh, paper cards, uh, magnetic, and was also possibility, and this magnetic forms. Um. Wow. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I like it. Well, is there anything else that you think we should cover on this particular system? We got it. Excellent. Well, thank you. Well, Johannes, thank you so much for taking the time to explain all of this to us. I really thoroughly enjoyed this, and uh, thank you for being, as far as we know, the first person to explain all of this in modern day in English for us in video. If you, if you ever want to know more about that, come to Paderborn in Germany, if you ever happen to be there. We have one of the largest computer museums worldwide. Uh, bring some time because we have a lot to show among these things. Excellent. Johannes, thank you very much. We appreciate your time today. All right, take care. Bye-bye.